The Plants vs. Zombies ripoff videos are two of my most successful videos, and of course, this is for a reason. Mostly because you guys are all awesome. So, since you guys enjoyed the first two so much, I figured, well, why not make another one? So in this video, we'll be looking at more Plants vs. Zombies ripoffs. Again. So first off, since I covered all the good ripoffs on iOS, I might as well move on to Flash games. Yeah, you know, not that other operating system that's known for ripoffs. Now there's one more thing I want to say before we get into it. If you enjoyed the ripoff series, you might enjoy some of the other videos I make, mostly because a lot of them follow the exact same format. But before talking about any ripoffs, let's talk about the actual Plants vs. Zombies Flash game, Plants vs. Zombies Web. Plants vs. Zombies Web was a free Flash game used to advertise Plants vs. Zombies. Plants vs. Zombies Web also added a new zombie, the Giga Football Zombie, which is a football zombie with the health of a gargantuar. So now that you know about the actual Plants vs. Zombies Flash game, let's get into the ripoffs. So the first game we'll be looking at is Toys vs. Nightmares. So, this game's actually pretty good. This might actually be the best Plants vs. Zombies ripoff I've ever played, and I'm pretty sure that's for a reason. Normally, when I play Plants vs. Zombies ripoff, their main purpose is to get money, but this is a free Flash game. You can actually tell that a lot of love was put into this game. It definitely helps that the art is pretty good as well. The gameplay itself is actually pretty neat. There are books that give you this game's equivalent of Sun, but you get Sun faster by clicking the book. And while there are some toys that are similar to plants, there are quite a few unique additions. This is a shadow demon that can only be killed when illuminated. The Plants vs. Zombies equivalent would be a zombie that can only be killed when frozen. Pretty cool. But you know what isn't cool? The difficulty. The game starts alright, but once you get a few levels in, the game becomes extremely punishing. Overall, Plants vs. Goblins isn't that bad. It's actually pretty good. The only problem is that the later levels have agonizing difficulty. The next game we'll be looking at is Plants vs. Aliens. So the game opens up pretty much like the original Plants vs. Zombies, except, you know, weirder. Also, the opening's interactable, so that's pretty cool. After that, we get taken to the map select, and now the game started. So let's get the elephant out of the room. The Plants vs. Zombies title screen music plays through the entire game, so I'll change that. Next, we don't actually need to touch the sun to collect it. We automatically get it as soon as it shows up on screen. Also, why is the pea shooter 50 sun? The sunflower is 150. So do you guys remember that Plants vs. Zombies 3 looked terrible? Well, they went back to the drawing board and here's what they come back with. Yeah! And it looks yeah! like an improvement. So the aliens look really out of place with the rest of the game. That's most likely because these aliens are probably from a different game. Hmm, I'm saying game a lot. Maybe I should try finding another word. PlayStation? So because sunflowers are so expensive now, it becomes a lot harder to build your defense. Especially when aliens ambush you at the beginning of the level. Even though they look different, the aliens are really just zombies with a new coat of paint. By that I mean the blue ones take one pea shooter, and the pink ones take two pea shooters to kill. At the end of the level, you get a trophy. And clicking on it immediately brings you to the next level. It also immediately gives you the new plant, without any instructions. And when the thing they give you is a pea shooter but it's slightly red, yeah, I kinda don't wanna spend 150 sun on that. So at this point, they now have the full squad rolling up. Hey, him a head out. Okay, time to see what that new plant does. Oh, it's just a fire pea shooter. Well, that's kinda disappointing. Huh, maybe the next plant will be better. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but believe it or not, I actually am happy to see Potato Mine, and at its original cost. This is because, now that we're a few levels in, the game's not afraid to spam aliens at us. Also, using a Potato Mine could give me some time to place a Sunflower. It still takes quite a bit of time for them to get ready though, so in an emergency, I wouldn't count on it. But now I'm worried, what if Potato Mine in this game is like the mines in Zombie Defense vs. Snipers? Also, since you don't have to wait for your seeds to refill, there's nothing stopping me from spamming Potato Mine. Also, the potato mines do one-shot. Everything. Even these giant purple things. But that's fine, because without potato mine spam, this level's basically impossible. If they were sending out the full squad before, now they're bringing in the army. It's looking like Survival Endless out here. Overall, Plants vs. Aliens is fine, but definitely could be better. For one, less spam. Okay, a lot less spam. The game itself actually isn't terrible. Well, not completely terrible at least.
So the next game we'll be playing is Angry Birds vs. Plants. So at first you might be thinking, what? But a game like this actually makes sense. Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds are two of the most recognizable mobile game series ever, so it only makes sense to combine them. And the result is this abomination. The gameplay itself is simple. Click on things to make them change. Some things delete, some things activate, and some things pop you. Wait, what? <coughs> the gameplay itself is actually pretty fun. It uses the mechanics it offers pretty well. The only thing that concerns me is the gameplay. It has nothing to do with Plants vs. Zombies or Angry Birds. I enjoyed playing this game so much, I actually 100%ed it. I'm gonna list off some of my favorite levels. In this level, you use a ball to make a bridge for the bird to go across. In this level, you have to use fumes from the push up a bird. In this level, you have to break blocks to make a bridge. Overall, Angry Birds vs. Plants doesn't really have that much to do with Angry Birds or Plants vs. Zombies, but it is a seriously fun Flash game, so I highly recommend it. The next game we'll be looking at is Angry Birds vs. Zombies Ultimate War. Wait, since when did Plants vs. Zombies Angry Birds become a genre? Wait, listen to the main menu music. That's a slowed down version. Why? So the main menu itself is a really poorly photoshopped mess. There are angry birds, there are zombies, there are pig zombies, and there are HD hyper-realistic angry birds. Dr. Zombie command thousands of zombies to attack angry birds. Click to help the bird defeat Dr. Zombies and Zombie Army now. Dr. Zombies in each level will appear with the improvement of level. Dr. Zombies will be more high level, more and more crazy. But for Angry Birds, the rate of appearing invincible birds become higher. So this game is kinda bizarre. You play as a pea shooter on a railroad track shooting Angry Birds at zombies and zombie pigs. At the end of each level, you face the Zombot without Dr. Zomboss inside. Ooh. Once you beat Zomboss, you get a little congratulatory message and then you go to the next level. Wait, what's that noise? Oh, I get it. Someone wants me to review Plants vs. Goblins 4, of course. <sighs> Fine. So the last game we'll be looking at is Plants vs. Goblins 4. So as you can see from this wonderful title screen, this game obviously kinda sorta maybe had a lot of effort put into it. Okay, let's see the game. So first things first, we start with five plants. That's kinda weird because we don't know what any of them do, but okay. So you start the level with 100 sun. You could either use it on an attacking plant, or you could use this weird sunflower strawberry thing. But what do the attacking plants do? Well, who knows? The game doesn't bother to tell you what each plant does. All you can do is assume. The pea shooter ripoff is a pea shooter ripoff, the walnut ripoffs are walnut ripoffs, and the corn thing is who knows. Now without further ado, let's see our enemies. Okay, these guys move ridiculously quickly. Also, the sun in this game works exactly like in Plants vs. Zombies 1. So there's really no reason it should be so fast. Also, the game decided it would be funny to give us two walnuts, but no insta-kill plants. Also, I think now's a good time to mention the random moaning. They also do a stupid chant every four seconds. Maluka, Navisa, darling, Rook, Navi. Like, I just want to play Plants vs. Goblins 4, not join a cult. Oh, okay, so now we have an insta-kill plant. So the plant itself is basically just a squash. Wait, that's just dynamite. Isn't this game Plants vs. Goblins? Four? Yeah, that's kinda weird. Let's see what happens if we beat the level. Oh boy, a new plant. It's not like we already have enough of those. So now I have to deal with these guys. They're basically just conehead zombies. So yeah, these guys are nothing special. In the next level, you get this stupid looking cactus thing. 
At first I thought it was a pea shooter, but it's actually a walnut clone. It's actually more of a bong choy clone, because it punches the zombies. Overall, Plants vs. Goblins was fine, but I think I actually preferred the original. It's a lot more transparent that Plants vs. Goblins 4 is obviously just a cash grab. Now before this video ends, I just want to thank you guys for 1,500 subscribers, it really means a lot. 